From deep in the Burbank Media District, it's time for another edition of My Burbank Talks, presented by the staff of My Burbank. Now, let's see what's on today's agenda as we join our program. Hello, everyone. Craig Sherwood here, along with Craig Durling, who now has to say hello also because we hello, can't, hello, hello. They can't hear you on a podcast. I'm actually, I'm, I'm waving. Yes. I'm, oh, look what I fell into the trap. And, what an uh, amateur. And, of course, Ross Benson. Good morning, America. Or how uh, are you? Isn't there a song? Okay. We finally got Craig it's Durling off of uh, assignment. And of course, <laughs> is, he's leaving on assignment again tomorrow. So well, you changed the locks and didn't tell me. So. Uh, Look, that as a hint. Well, you know, we do the best we can, and that was the best we could. <laughs> Get me out. Well, now we have these traffic questions I can we can ask you. Oh, you saved them all up, did you? Well, this new, yeah, you, we'll, we'll get into it. Well, we didn't talk about that in the pre-show, did we? Well, let's start. No, you, you love, you love, uh, yeah, you, you love throwing me curveballs. He gets a script a week in advance, and he doesn't wait till showtime. And... The ink is still wet on the rundown. This well, is you know, way. yeah, we'll get to it. Well, first of all, we, we need to give a, a shout out to uh, George at Patty's for the great Ed Heather and pie, and of course our waitress Heather, our server Heather, our very server. always very patient with us. She really is great sense of humor. Yes, and uh, very just great service. I mean, we have our, our pre our pre meeting at Patty's every Monday, yep. and we break bread before we uh, we, yes, we do. Well, and you think about it, she deals with customers through the dinner hour and everything. And she is all, always very fun. She gets our drinks. She's a hoot. She, she really is. She's a hoot. She is, uh, and we even... And she likes cats also. She's a cat she person. two cats. Yep. And we can't, we told George how good she is, and he agreed. And then he said, how many pies do you want? <laughs> right. <laughs> Not that he pays us in pies. And I'll tell you what, you know, Patty's on this side of town is like Hill Street on the other side of town where... The service is always good. Oh, it really good. is, yeah. Good point. The, the food is always fresh, and it's it's homemade, and they make cakes there every day. So if you're a cake person- They make person, their own cakes, a couple of their own pies. Their own they own make pies. The, the cinnamon rolls every morning. Yeah, cinnamon rolls in the morning. Wow. Ah. What, what, what is the morning? You're good. I like that comparison of it's the Hill Street of-, of Yeah, it really is. The valley end. <laughs> the whatever. opposite end. Yeah. You, you go yeah. to Hill Street, you can always will get a, 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 a great meal. Yeah. I still think Hill Street's one of the biggest secrets in Burbank. You know, and, and we can most, walk to Patty's. Most people don't talk about it, but their restrooms are spotless. They got some nice deodorant in there. They're always clean. How is it now? Well, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Never mind. On to the news. The week that was, the week that will be. <laughs> Here we go. Let's start off with uh, last week on Tuesday. Uh, Providence St. Joseph Medical Center announced that their urgent care has now opened across the medical center in the Cusimano Family Health Center, and it's open seven days a week. Okay, so Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., and weekends and holidays from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Ross, I you talked to a, one of the doctors there. What do you have to say about well, it? Well, last week I read a little thing from Dr. Campo uh, that uh, people don't understand. Instead of occupying the ER, most people come in and with... A kid with a you know a hurt finger, or a minor injury that can be handled by urgent care. They do X-rays over there now. They can set bones over there now. If it's major, they walk you across the street. But you don't have to go in and in hog up. That's a great or, point. Yeah, uh, you're clogging up the ER for people that actually need emergency. So if it's major, service. you go to the ER. If it's general, you go to the urgent care. What about if it's an admiral? Oh, cricket. Oh, cricket. Cricket. We're going to put cricket. crickets in. Sure. No, sure. But, sure. you know, I, I understand her point real well because a lot of people complain, oh, I had to wait three hours in the ER oh. at St. Well, Joe. Well, nothing against families or kids, but kids tend to get sick. They bring stuff home from school and stuff. But the ER is not the place for your kid with the sniffles or a little cough right. or something. That's emergency room. In so, in this, and it's state of the art. You can't miss it. If you go in off of Buena Vista where the ER is, you look to your left, and it says in huge letters, Cusimano Urgent Care. So that is their new... No missing it. Is it right. Cusimano Urgent Care or is it Providence Cusimano Cancer Center? It's right next to... But they, all, they also are sponsoring the Urgent yeah. Care, too. Oh, yeah. Cusim Cusimano Family Health oh. Center, it's called. Yep. Yes, it is. So a great option for 
the folks who who don't necessarily need emergency. And once again, yeah, and I'm going to say this. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, the Cusamanos, this Cusamanos, that in Burbank. You know what? The Cusamanos, thanks to the Cusamanos, we have things like that in Burbank where they are giving their money and their time. And, you know, right. so before you sit to criticize them about developments and everything else, you know, let's remember this part of it also. You know, Very they, they give back to this community more than anybody else does. Very philanthropic. Well, they are. And, and yeah. their their mother, their grandmother, started as a volunteer there. And their whole family, there's wings of the hospital that I have been in that they have paid and donated for. Um, so, and I was thinking uh, we should probably point out this week, if you do drive by St. Joe's and you see all the picketing nurses and other services. No, out, no nurses. Oh, n- not nurses. Other orderlies, people that wheel people to the rooms, all those other services are on strike. The hospital is still operational. They, We put out an article in my Burbank that everything is, they have people filling in positions and the hospital is ready for any disaster or anything. So, so they're full, they're fully staffed they're, according to the hospital. Yeah, right? They're fully staffed. Yeah. They brought in extra staff people. But my only problem with that whole thing is, okay, I get it. People need, you know, they have the right to strike and all that. But, you know, they go up by the hospital and they start beating drums and, and hitting horns, blowing out horns and everything else to be disruptive. You know, they if they were working in there and people from the public came outside and did that while they were working, you know, and they, they, were, they were interfering with patient care by that, you know, and, and bothering patients. What, what what gives them the right to do that themselves? I mean, I understand you're on strike. Okay, you're on strike. Here's your action. You're outside. You're walking your picket signs. You're making public aware. Hey, we get all that, but to go up there and really and bother the patients who are fighting for their lives, is that really, you know, is that really necessary? And I, I'm very disappointed in those people that they're not looking at it. And at that point, they're kind of showing their true colors, maybe because their concern, primary concern, obviously, isn't for those people who are trying to. Recuperate yeah. and are recovering from surgeries and ailments and stuff. If you know, you're usually, out there making all that noise right outside the rooms. Usually, the police department will have an officer go out there and give guidelines. You know, what entrances or how many people can block a driveway at one time. So, well, I saw the Channel 7 News. They actually walked up to the front doors. Yeah. They didn't just stay on the sidewalk, they went up to the front doors on See, private at, property. At, at six in the morning, when uh, f- I looked at four and five, they were both out there. They were out at the street, you know. At, yeah, that's that they were too. Entrance. But then all of a sudden, they all walked inside for some reason. Yeah, and, and that's not, you know, striking is. I understand they're, what they're trying to do. Yeah, but also, folks, think about the people that these are the same people that you need to care for when you go off strike next week. Where are your priorities? Yeah, really. Yeah, well, so. I, that's a bit of we'll get into that. Um, city council meeting on Tuesday night last week. Uh, we they honored. Uh, once their yearly honoring of the employees, um, I think one employee actually spent as forty-five years with the city. Can you believe that forty-five? Um, he started off as a summer worker, right? And he's been there forty-five years, and he's one hundred and twenty-seven years old now. Well, I <laughs> and Ross still has more years for the, with yes, the he city. Does. Well, it's funny, you know. I I watched that whole ceremony, and they. They reward people with certificates, or I think it was... You know, our, our city manager, Justin Hess, 25, 25 years. years. Good for We him. all thought he was there longer. But, you know, there's some policemen, and, and the other day, they have a breakfast um, a couple of days later, and I found out there's some employees that have fathers, mothers, brothers, and cousins all working for the city. Yeah, not anymore, though. <laughs> Thank you, David Gordon. Oh, no, 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 no. They don't work. They can all work for the city, right? But they not for the same department. Sandoval, the Sandoval yeah. family. They just can't. They can't work in the same department. So if if you are, a and fi- they certainly right. can't work for each other. If your dad's a fireman, and you better be a policeman because you can't be a fireman. But it, it, you know, well, a good I, example. I, unless you'll be a fireman, then you have you have your your dad retire. You know, the Sandoval <laughs> family. I when I saw them the other day, I saw George. I saw. I can't think of her name. She. But they're they working for the city before that law. We got oh, yes. To, yeah. yeah. But it's neat to see that it's a family, you know. So on Wednesday, we'll get down and I'll talk about 
a breakfast they had. It was kind of fun. Um, City Council that night also amended the ADU policy in the municipal code to coincide with state laws. Not a whole lot with that. Uh, they also decided they're going to start researching about the Armenian Memorial and would like to try to get something at least planned before April. So they have something to report back to their to everybody before the uh, Armenian Genocide Remembrance Day. So they is are working it, on that. They already have like a location kind of penciled well, they in, really, or is they that really part of the process? No, they, they hadn't, didn't really say about a location. So They've done it. They've met every year. They want it to be at, at, City, City, Hall. at, at City Hall. Okay. But now, once again, are you setting that presence that who else is going to want their memorial or, or their recognition? So finding an appropriate location will be part of the yeah. process, I assume. So, but they are, it's something they, they'd like to do. Um, but the next one is uh, kind of colorful. And then the next one is they, they also approved an administrative procedure to light City Hall in colors. And this is, I guess, maybe one of the only two or three things in the in the city of Burbank a mayor can actually do. So uh, at the mayor's request, and of course, there'll be co consultation with the city manager, too, about, uh, so, you know, different times, uh, October, I'm sure it'd be pink. Well, I remember you know? the days they literally had but, gel color well, but and you, go up and do the gel. But did you hear what they said? They only have six different color lights. Well, see, that's what and, gets me is, well, you know, what, look, why don't they do it now, put in LEDs. Put in LEDs. And you could have 100 different colors. 100? Yes. It's like 10,000. Well, that's how long they burn. So, there aren't that many days on the calendar. You know, well, but they need to, now would be a good time. To modernize it. To modernize it. Put in LEDs now. Nobody working for the city now would ever have to change them. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because they burned for a hundred thousand. I'm sure they'll monitorize it as soon as they get to to the Starlight Bowl. Oh wait, that's a whole <laughs> different thing. Yeah, that's that's our antique on the hill. Um, but those two things kind of going together because Viviana, you know, she, I feel sorry for her. She had to do the study on, like she said when she did her report. She knows more now about flagpoles than probably anybody in City Hall. So, well, let's move on to Wednesday. Um, our reporter Devin Haranda, and uh, and by the way, we are losing Devin Haranda, and we're not. It, it, I, you know, it's sad for us because how valuable she's been to us. But extremely good for, and you know what? And I'm I'm glad. I, you know, it's it's like, as a high school coach, my greatest thing was, you know, when a player would graduate, you you hate losing that star player, but then the star player would go on to college. You'd, you'd get the next level. Well, Devin's gonna get the next level also. She's going up to to Redding, California, and and be an on air personality. And I think a weekend anchor at the news station up there. And and real quickly, I just want to say, when Devin came to us. She did not want to do, she wanted to write. Yeah. And we created YouTube. We created several shows that she hosted. You had made the recommendation. That well, money's in broadcast journalism. Money's not in written journal. You know, ask writers for the LA Times. How, how's yeah. that working out for them? Right. So you, know, you had recommended her, and her father has experience doing that. Her father's one of the great color analysts in college basketball. You'll see so. him on all kinds of stations. Bill Horanda. And anytime you'll see him on, you know, doing games, very knowledgeable, very. So she, you know, she's following in his footsteps, but to get a job, she came down to LA, you know, and it's a hard. Yeah, she, from the Sacramento area. And when she came down, she, you know, she asked us, you know, do we need somebody? I think she's at either Glendale or Pasadena College at the time. And one day, and so, yeah, yeah, take her. Okay, yeah, we'll give you a try. We always do that, and about two stories later, never hear from them again. But Devin kept coming back, and you know she broke the Pickwick story for us, the SB thirty five thing. Uh, she's done a lot of great events. So we work together this weekend and tomorrow. I will post a story, her final story with us, it was at uh, the historical society. Hysterical, I mean historical society. And it is not this story. There's another story. So it's not the story we were talking about. No, we posted. We will, yeah, no, we will miss no, Devin. That was sure. that we was the Road King Devin. story she posted last week. Ah, there's a lot of stories. So, and then in the story, she said how the Road Kings uh, 
uh, have given in, uh, in this in this last cycle twenty thousand dollars to five local nonprofits. Um, which you know that that's you see the Road Kings out there doing their thing at uh, at uh, Car- Johnny Carson Park or different events or fundraisers. Well, this is where the money goes. It goes right back to our community to, to nonprofits that really need the money. And those four or five nonprofits were BTAC, Burbank Police Foundation, the Historical or uh, the Historical Society, and Jacaranda Housing. And the fifth? It's dead five here. I did pick that. That wasn't five? Yeah. I thought it was. Ooh, roll back the tape. Roll back the tape. Start all over. Where's They'll the, have to come up with ten thousand. But another great more. local philanthropic yes. organization. Well, that's Road, Road Kings. Kings. They really are. Um, and she got to know Road Kings really well. Yes. Uh, we also posted a story on on Wednesday about McCambridge Pool and City of Burbank receiving one point five million uh, million 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 from the state to renovate the pool. It's it's too bad that. McCambridge Pool, which is, is operational and does need renovations, it was, you know, built back in, what, the 50s. But yet Burbank Heights Pool has now sat idle for three years with no plan on... I, I'm sure the school board should say, well, if you don't pass the bond measure for us, we won't fix the pool. You know, I mean, that, that, they're going to start They're going to start holding hostage, facilities hostage for you to f- pass the bond measure. Whole different subject. But, you know, I'm glad at least McCambridge Pool... It's getting the upgrade. Well, I was there for the uh, check passing, and um, we had pictures. I mean, they're putting in kind of like Verdugo Aquatic Center, a little kids' pool now, a big slide. The pool will be heated. I don't think many Burbank people know there is an underground viewing. Yes, there is. We've we've both done that many times. We have. That's always our uh, pool open photo every year. That's right. Get a kid to jump in the pool and and make a face at it. Hold the sign. Hold the sign. Yep. <laughs> Boy, that was that was the old days. Just to say, blub blub blub. I I know I I had to go out and buy a new sign every year. We're open. <laughs> yeah, but, you, you shouldn't use that uh, erasable ink or whatever that was. That water unwaterproof ink. Yeah, it uh, uh, it turned the pool the, the pool red every year. If that. you ever get a chance to watch a water polo game. A game? A game. Watch it from that tank down below. What is going on under the surface is a lot more exciting. And, 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 than what's well, going that, on. that's what they always say. Though, in a water polo game, the true action is below the water, oh, it and is. that's it's a very physical game. Actually, it is. I I was a water polo player in high school. Good old Mister Herms. You know what they called you in high school on the water polo team? Blub blub blub. Bob. Yeah, just because I'm the size of a whale doesn't mean I can swim at all. So <laughs> I was never the uh, let's see here. Moving on. Oh, the police commission. Your favorite. Met. Your the favorite. The police commission met. And that's about all they do is meet. They because received. They met and received. That's it. Um, they, they, re- well, it's going to receive reports that the city staff had to prepare for them and present to them. And what they do about those reports. Oh, oh thank you very much. Yeah. You know, if you don't believe me, go to the city website, go to the meeting archive and just watch a police commission meeting. Watch the last one and tell me if they really do serve a purpose in any way for our city. Well, if you're going to direct people to watch the meeting, those people can learn about the Met team. Oh, yeah. Those people can I, learn. No, they can learn what they learn. But here's my problem. You look, they, they get this information in, which is great. It, it's it's great information. But what do they do? Do they send the information out to the public? Do they do anything with the No. They just, it's like we give, it, we give information to seven people. Are they requ- are they re- required by city charter or something to have a police commission? Is yes. it so right. they have to exist? Well, yeah, but they can be like the planning commission and just take weeks off, like they are this coming instead of having a meeting. Your gripe is that they have meetings when yeah, they yeah, if there's something on the agenda they need to really talk about and maybe make a recommendation to the council. Yes, have the meeting and let's let's talk about it. But to have a meeting for the sake of a meeting. So I asked one of our commissioners after Wednesday's meeting. I saw him at the uh, historical society and i went up to him and i said can i ask what those reports were for you have not heard about mental health before you haven't heard from the traffic bureau of how they do this what was the use of all that time that you guys- what do you say <laughs> the cricket i need the crickets for next week don't I? Sh- was it just a shrug just- he, yeah he didn't have an answer he says i don't know 
he basically yeah. said that. My other question is, if you listen to that meeting, they have tons of subcommittees. Oh, and some of them didn't even know what committee they were on anymore. They go, oh, am I on that? <laughs> but they did get business cards. I want cards. that gig. Yeah, so they have business cards. They have I business cards. I want that cards. gig. So, I mean, I, 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 good meaning people. A lot of police commissioners in some cities get badges, too. They used to. Yeah. Until yeah. they were misused here in Burbank. That's what it's, what, you're, that, what's a, ruins it all for yeah, everybody. Not, not only badges, but we had a police commissioner, Johnny Grant, that actually had a police radio in his car. Yes. The Johnny Grant? The, the Johnny, Johnny Grant, Grant. The mayor of Hollywood. The mayor of Hollywood. But um, council members also used to get badges. Yeah. And you know that old line, no, I don't need no stinking badge? What movie is that from? Don't need no stinking badges. They took them away because they were misused. Let me tell you, the, the, first, the first thing, if you ever hear from somebody is, don't you know who I am? When you hear that line. Well, I've never heard that. Yeah. Oh. Don't you know who I am? If you hear that line, then say, I have no idea. And this Just, is one of those towns where everybody's somebody. Don't you know who I am? They're probably the only good part about the police commission, when the chief gives up, gets up and gives a count. Of events, yeah, uh, that's going to occur the next month. You write them all down real quick. I do. I do. But just like you've got lieutenants there, you got captains, you got a chief, just all sitting there all night long just to give these reports out. And how many hours they spend making these they're, reports? They're probably out. thinking the same thing. You got a city attorney. Like, what are we doing? You got a city attorney sitting there, and even she during the meeting tuned out. And because I guess one of the commissioners uh, was at Rite Aid when it got robbed, and he had a propane tank. And she got a call from somebody saying, did he use that propane tank as a weapon? And so when they asked her a question, she goes, oh, I was talking to my boss about propane tanks. So, uh, I mean, that's what goes on at that meeting. It is absolutely, you know, it's, it's Abner and Costello. And did you notice a new city attorney got up and introduced himself? He's going to take the prosecution cases. There was a question um, about the well, let, courthouse. Let's hope that after they give these people bail on their ticket, they actually show up to get prosecuted. Oh, thanks for bringing that up. I was uh, approached by somebody from Laz, or is that Laz? The new parking, the parking, parking Laz. Yes. They are hiring. You want to be a parking control officer, that company is hiring left well, and right. They know about, you just can't work your let, own block. Let's talk about that later in the show. We're going to bring in Laz, and I'll bring that up, and we'll talk about that. So Okay. Um, Put that under new business. So Thursday, well, we had a city employee uh, recognition breakfast, and of course, when there's only one digit on the clock, you'll never see me get up. Wait a minute. I know. I was up. Didn't we already have an employee night? Well, yeah, they do Tuesday night at council. And then Thursday, they had the breakfast in the morning. Oh. And this year, they had a new uh, vendor feeding people. Got a little slow, ran out of food, had to make up. But all the city, they start at 630 for the guys that are starting the street work. Trash, trash, you know, you know what? And, they, and, the, they, and the graveyard folks right. that are getting and, trying to get off. And, and they didn't mind waiting for the food. You know why? Free because food. They're being paid. That's right. To be there. They're not, you know, I'm sure people on their day off didn't come in for that breakfast. Oh, I saw a couple. Well, I saw a couple. But they, it's, it's really nice. They have a theme. We're going to put an article in my Burbank uh, to recognize all the people that did get recognized for milestones. And uh, they give out prizes and prizes. A screen, uh, well, gifts. No, well, it's better than getting recognized for gallstones. Party favors, but it's uh, people that you know. You work for the city for ten, twenty, thirty years, or in some cases, forty-five. Right, and you get one of those pensions. Oh man, oh. you're, you're, you're oh. life. Well, there were oh. three. There's Cal, Cal Pers will just, just love you know. They just love to give that money out. Policemen, firemen, public works. I right. Those are the three that had some real long term employees. And I'm told that they honored him at City Hall, the forty five. He's a custodian now in City Hall. Well, and usually the police and fire, the public safety folks are the only ones that, uh, state PERS employees that can ma that max out. Well, you mean they didn't try to they didn't try to poach him the way other departments try to poach our cops and firemen? They just they let the, the city. No, they hall do work? that, but <laughs> but public safety people max out, so they they stop, right? You know, increasing pay at a certain amount as far as retirement. Where your teachers, your your public services people that are in PERS, 
they the more years they have on, the higher percentage they get in their retirement. They can keep going forever. But as I was once told, nobody wants 80-year-old cops or firemen running around or hobbling around out there. Um, so we usually max out at around 30, 35 years. After that, you know, the joke was, you know, you're basically paying to come to work. <laughs> and, and it was nice. What I did, I said to Judy Wilkie, our retiring assistant city manager, looking at overall the people there having breakfast, people are getting a lot younger, applying for jobs in Burbank. And leaving a lot. <laughs> a lot. Going to other cities. I just found out that one of the fire inspectors that we had on our podcast has gone to Pasadena. Really? And, yep. And they have four or five new inspectors. Is that the, yes. the girl? Yes. The one, we, yes. the one we just met at Fire Service Day? Yes. The one we yeah. liked so much? Yes. Oh, man. No, we don't like Figures. her anymore. Scared, um, her, scared another one away. Yep. She, her husband's a fireman in Pasadena. Oh, okay. But oh. good, good. Could yeah. have seen that coming probably then, right? <laughs> exactly. Or leaving. You know, I, 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 put, I threw a tweet out today. I saw an, uh, an email put out that the city of Las Vegas, or Las Vegas, nor a city in Las Vegas somewhere, near, one of their suburbs, is asking, uh, they're, they're trying to get police officers on lateral laterals. You know, if you're a cop somewhere and you want to mm-hmm. become a cop there. They're offering them thirty thousand dollars signing bonuses, five thousand dollars relocation fees, and if they're a military veteran, an extra five. That's up to forty thousand dollars to transfer to Las Vegas. Not uh, not uncommon to offer uh, signing bonuses and stuff now, just to attract people, because well, you have to differentiate yourself from yeah, because, all the other agencies. Out there. How that much, is a lot. How much are they going to save? That is a lot by not sending somebody to a doing all the background work, yeah. all the man hours. Send them to an right. academy, doing the you know, the training on. It, it, they probably in the long run are actually making making out on. And just, they can put these people pretty much right in the field. Have right to do away. some orientation. And, and that's that, what but. Burbank Fire has done with uh, their last round of hires. So some. Well, we laterals. took care of the fire department. Now the, the police department is doing their contract now. So uh, let me tell you what: if you don't take care of our cops, they're going to go to Las Vegas or some other right. city and make a whole lot more money just just by walking in their door. Right over our border to Glendale. What do you mean going? Yeah, so uh, that, that's a real that's thing. That's why it's people. getting real competitive now, because not th- this generation isn't in it uh, as a calling anymore, as tradition. It's a job now, so you have to be. They're they're competing now. All these cities and departments have to be competitive, just like any other industry now. And most of the guys that are on the street, officers, police officers, they're pretty young guys. I mean, it's a young man's business. It out is. There. You're right. Yeah. Because you promote, you go upstairs, you become a detective or whatever, and you're not on the street anymore. So they really well hard to keep. A lot of departments going. hurting right now, and you know because the you know the younger folks are, are in patrol because it really is a young person's business out there. But people get out of the out of patrol so quickly now with all the different special units and detectives and met teams and things like that. It's 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 hard to maintain numbers in patrol. Well, so there are agencies now that are making people from other divisions in the department do rotations in patrol. So you have detectives that might not fit in their old uniforms and now having to come out and work patrol for six months because they're so shorthanded they can't keep well, up. Well, Craig the, and the I attrition. remember two seven two East Olive. That was a tiny building. I remember it. You know, they didn't, we didn't have that was the beginning of K nine. We didn't have SWAT. We didn't have Met. We didn't S- have SRT. The, right back then, it was yeah. SRT. But yeah. departments right. are changing so rapidly. Back then, a, a bear cat was a uh, <laughs> was an animal. <laughs> it was a cat without yeah. fur. Yeah. So departments are changing a lot, and city employees, you know. But we need to do whatever we times. can to pay our. I, I don't match other cities' pay. Give them more. Keep them here. Yep. It's worth it in the long run. Yep. Get my vote. Um. Thursday night, uh, school district held their meeting, and one of the things that they reported out of their meeting was uh, the graduation rates this year. So at Burbank High, they had 564 seniors and 528 graduated. 15 needed a fifth year and uh, to graduate, and 16 did not graduate, and eight other seniors just dropped out. At Burroughs, there were 508 seniors, 492 graduated. And two needed a fifth year. There were eight non-graduates, two dropped out. And a Monterey. Wait a minute. I got to give a shout out for Burroughs. 
They beat uh, Burbank High at something? Exactly. That's our alma mater, Craig. <laughs> yeah. they, they also had less students, too. Oh. Yeah, but um, boom. At Monterey. So is this saying, I'm sorry to interrupt, but the, the you said they say some needed a fifth year and then 16 or whatever to graduate? Do Does that, that mean they well, didn't, that means that, didn't know, qualify it, for it, another year? If or? they don't have enough credits to graduate, they get some Fs and everything else, they send them to adult school for those courses. And once they pass those courses and get the three points or five points or whatever, enough points, that's called the fifth year. They don't actually go to school okay. at an eight-hour day. They only go to take those classes they needed to. They just have to make up, right. make up for it, but and there that, are some that don't even do and, that. Right? And, all, right. and, and also, when you do going to fifth year, you cannot play sports. You cannot do anything extracurricular. Yeah, you because, don't need the distraction. Because, well, <laughs> you only have uh, eight semesters of eligibility in, in high school sports. So once four years is up, you've lost your eligibility. Hmm. Okay. Um, you left off, sorry. Uh, Monterey. 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 Monterey had 91 seniors. 88 graduated, and three needed a fifth year to graduate. There were zero non-graduates, but one did drop out. So I'm trying to figure out. They had, ni- let's see, 91. Uh, they had 90, 91 seniors, 88 graduated, and three needed a fifth year. But they say one dropped out. That would have made 92. So, so yeah, somebody well, in the school districts needs to go to school. None of them are good at math. Yeah, I guess. You know, I, I you got to you gotta take your hat off to those kids at Monterey. I've been to that school. I've covered events at that school. They really, they want to get that GED. Well, you know, that's kind of one of, that's, it's, it's last chance. Now they've got a couple other schools in the district. They've got the, uh, what, what do you call it, the place over on Santa, Santa Anita, Anita and San Fernando, San which Fernando. I actually worked a few times back in my school district days. That is, that a, is rough, a rough, rough school. play. That is where students use four-letter words in front of their teachers, and what the, are you going to do about it? Right. And, you know, they're doing everything they can to keep these kids in school. And, you know, my hat's off to the staff there. And they do have an interesting turtle. I used to did have a turtle back then who was roaming the uh, the grounds. Very, very large. Or maybe a tortoise. I'm not but sure. I remember when they started their garden up there and they have a full culinary. I mean, yeah. these kids yeah. up there, their culinary, a Kia went in there and fixed them a whole kitchen. So is it more of a, a trade? Um, no, 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 no. It's just, it's, it's a last chance Charlie school. It's, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's for kids who've been violent or it, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a guard. They have guard yeah. checks. Yeah, I'm familiar with the type of school. And, I, I've worked with them in the past. I just yeah. didn't, didn't know about Monterey specifically. Yeah. Kids can't come and go as they want. You know, I mean, it's, it's a lockdown situation, but uh, you know, it's, at least it was when I worked well, good, there. Good for those who, who managed to graduate. Exactly. I, I was just going to say hats off to yep. all those kids that did get their diplomas and and moving on to Time the to world. turn the page. Yep. Uh, moving on to Friday, a couple, uh, city manager report came out, and somebody asked, actually asked the city attorney's office if they could go back to doing small claims court again in Burbank. They, they, they used to years ago, but we're basically told that you know, it, it's controlled by the uh, L.A. County court system, and they consolidated years ago to save money. And uh, so the nearest small claims courts are like in Van Nuys and Pasadena. And Burbank, ha- they don't see Burbank ever bringing small claims back, which is a shame because it's nice if we have our own court here that we can actually have. But rarely do you, you know, get anything back that's taken away. Right. Yeah. And they not only small claims, but they wanted... Um, like oh, night, night court? or No, they... Um, when you get evicted, um, forget the wording. Oh, the landlord, you, tenant. Yeah, yeah you, they you used eviction to court that. or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, but again, they said not in Burbank, but that we don't control that. Burbank doesn't control that. that's the court system in LA. It's a county, LA County. county. Yep. That's that's Nobel County. Um, there was also exploring a, a bicycle pedestrian bridge from Burbank to basically where on, to Forest Lawn Drive over the LA River. But people in the rancho have a lot of concerns about basically unseated characters using it from the L.A. side, coming to Burbank, robbing a house or something, and then running back over that bridge. Well, I, I, I totally see the point there, because what lives on the other side of what where the bridge would be? What's there now? Yeah, the, you know, the 60 dilapidated you know, RVs and tra- piles of trash and stuff. But my initial, my innocent question to this is, who, do, who would this benefit? Well, when I was on Walk Bike Burbank many years ago, there's a lot of trails over there, and how do you on a bike? Yeah, you can't bring your bike across. And keep the, horse. the horses off of it. Well, you can't, you can't go on the horse bridge no. to go over. 
So what they were going to do with Bob Hope, they were going to build a bridge for a bike, just for bike and walking. Can't drive over it. But again, this was years ago. Yeah, And I understand, because, you know, I don't know if people know this or not, but a lot of house and home burglaries occur up on the hill in Burbank. And they're finding that people drive up Cabrini Drive, park at the top, jump over the fence, and walk a few, you know, 40 or 50 yards, and they're in Burbank backyards, and they're up there robbing houses. And then they, they grab the stuff, they go down the hill, and they jump over the fence, and they're, they're you know, basically, they're, they're not even in Burbank. They're in L.A. now because the community drive is in L.A. So I can see where that could happen on, you know, a, a bridge over from Forest Lawn Drive. Well, they rob it, they run across Forest Lawn, and that's it. How are the cops going to get over there? They have to go all the way around? They're gone by then. Well, and I don't think a lot of people understand Bob Hope Drive, where the part of that is most of that park is in L.A., not Burbank. We're talking opposite sides of town now, Bob Hope, between Cabrini well, and Bob Hope, but the fight, same situation. Yeah. Where some of it is in L.A., some of it's in exactly. Burbank. And they wanted, they've been wanting to put this bike path in on Bob Hope Drive, going over, you know, over the river, but... With what's going on over the river now. Who, who's, yeah. who's wanting to do this? Who's pushing this? The well, city or? The bike coalition, no. you know, a lot of people that ride bikes. No. And, it was just more, more of a, you know, hey, this is going, and this is what we're hearing. And it was, the city manager's report is nothing. Just information. No, it's just information. Yeah. You know, what, what, what they're hearing. Uh, the weekend, the historical, I mean, sorry, the historical society <laughs> had their. Uh, Freudian. 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 Freudian slip, as they call it. And he's a member. And I'm a of, member. I, I'm a of, card carrying well, you, member. You do get hysterical. Yes, I do. Uh, I'm a card carrying member, though, and I advise everybody to go out and, and get that. It's twenty dollars a year. You can afford that to, to keep Burbank's history. Well, you missed your. You got campaign. you got yours at the at the uh, at the thing. at the event this at, year. Yes, I remember I did. that with your donation. You also yes put in for your your membership. Kudos. You to know You know how many people thanked us for that while I was there Saturday covering it for the podcast that we did. All 20 of them who listened to it? Well, several of the members there. <laughs> those are just, those are just unique listeners. They listened to it oh, several times. Okay, though. that's... Yeah. But yeah. Uh, it was a rather nice event. This was, I guess, one of three. They had a tea. They had the event we did, the barbecue. And today, then there was a wine reception. They had... I picked the wrong one. They had champagne. Uh, they had uh, caviar. No, I didn't see caviar. 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 Um, sure. That was the name of the band. Char- Char- Chartreuse. Char- 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 How do you pronounce Charcuterie. That? This tooth. Charcuterie. Thank you. Don't this lose your tooth. chiclet. Don't don't lose your, your chiclet. Well, there. yeah, that tooth doesn't let me say charcuterie. And, and well. char- <laughs> define charcuterie for me. But oh, salami, cheeses, almonds, nuts, fruit. They had two huge Pure tables. Meats, sampling. It's a platter, a sampler platter. Oh, a sampler and I platter. saw some people make platters. But then afterwards. Charcuterie is a French term. If you're in uh, Italy, it's salumi. It's not salami. Part. Not salami, salumi. Ah. The uh, wow. Italian it's not platter, version it's, of it's charcuterie. Plat- platter puss. Charcuterie is for the French. You could tell who travels out of. <laughs> I, I do. I, I am known to leave the bubble on occasion. Yes. But then they had. They went upstairs, and our good friend Don Baldessaroni, who is a president of the Historical Society, introduced a ton of kids and a ton of their board members. They had a dessert table with, oh my, all sorts of goodies. The eight kids wrote essays, and tomorrow morning there will be an article in my Burbank from our Devon Horrenda with pictures from yours truly of the event. Um, we had some council members there. Uh, Anthony Portentino was there and made a presentation. So uh, it was a rather nice event. And, you know, like she says in her article, or Don Balderoni says, for the kids that get to go and really know where Burbank started, the airport days, the, you know, Lockheed being here. But and anybody in the Burbank or Burbank area, you know, one of these great events that they have there is reason enough. To go check out the Historical Society. It's a fantastic uh, venue. Just go 
during regular hours. Yeah. And you'll spend hours just walking around uh, learning about. But every weekend, the, you'll have an all hist- the history. You have an hysterical time. time with the historical society. You have an hysterical time, especially if you get lost in the building. Yes, and, and that's easy to do, actually. And it's a two story building. Two story. You would never know what was upstairs if you didn't venture up there. But there's an upstairs. It's really neat. So it was a very, rather nice event. Thank you to cool. Great. Mary Jane Strickland, who back in 1973, 50 years ago, thought about starting a museum and so forth. Absolutely. Well, that's it for the week that was. We're going to pause for a com- quick commercial break, and we'll be back with a week that will be. How would you like your business advertised in this very spot? My Burbank Talks is looking for local businesses interested in a 30-second spot to appear in our podcasts. If you're interested, please email advertising at myburbank.com and we'll be glad to discuss all of the exciting possibilities with you. Now, back to our podcast. And we're back. The week that was, week that will be. And I'm challenging our advertising department to put an ad in there yeah. sometime. <laughs> So I don't have to hear my voice in the middle of the show all the time. You know, it's funny. This week I did talk to two people. That you talked to two people? I think you talked a lot more than that. At the same no, time? I did, but I, I talked to them about that spot. So we might have somebody. Well, well, any list, anybody listening out there, just understand, if you're listening to the podcast and you hear my voice in that ad right there, you know it's vacant. And that's your, your chance to jump in on that and get a 30-second spot in the middle of this very podcast. Craig Stewart here, along with Craig, Julian, Ross Benson for our second segment here. Uh, we'll, I was going to start off with talking about the strike today at Pro- uh, Providence St. Joseph's Medical Center, but Ross already jumped on that earlier, out of order on the script. So He, he, was, oh, out, he was out of order. Yes. Now that I see, it says, <laughs> I couldn't figure out who was out striking, the Service Employees International Union. Well, why, well, why that rolls I, right off the top. <laughs> why do I send this to you? Why do you bother? Why, why do we sit down why and even talk do about this? I looked at this before and I didn't this see is, this. It's news to him. It's like reading the paper yes. for the first time. <laughs> well, well, we'll just gloss right over These that. You guys are in charge. You're in charge, you guys. That must have been when I took my nap. That, all day. <laughs> Except for that damn helicopter. Oh, that uh, helicopter. Oh, the that helicopter that, for those that had Burbank, the gall of flying during the day when normal people are. Yeah, how dare they fly when people are trying to sleep in the middle of the day? <laughs> um, to, to be clear, Ross, he works the night shift. Yes, he does. He's the night owl. Or at least he's up during the night shift. I was up all night. I, I watched the strikers at 4 a.m. getting ready to go picket at St. Joe's. thought it was dark. It was. Oh. And then it went, when the sun comes up, I go to bed. And my phone, you're like a vampire. Oh, I am. Well, and you, you know what was dark? The planning commission. They did not meet again today. So they were dark. How Good are we segue. building? Good segue. And How are we uh, building with no planning? Well, we have no plan. There's nothing to plan anymore. We're just going to, it's all SB35 projects now. Oh, boy. They have no control. But did you notice Empire is closed west of Buena Vista, getting the Department of Water and Power or redoing? Now, how would I notice that? Because we ran, did we not you, run? You don't read myburbank.com? You know, we don't run? No, we don't run. I don't run at all. In fact, I barely walk. Yeah. Oh. Hashtag truth. I thought we put a notice up about Empire being closed through traffic. Not that. The only way I put it was San Fernando being closed. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, consider <laughs> yourself advised. Be advised, yes. I guess, because I drive that oh, every okay. week. Well, maybe Empire you want to share goes- that with people next time you see it. I thought they sent it out, and I thought we ran it. I don't read every article in my Anyway, book. back to the live show. Yes. Um, <laughs> Empire is closed west of Buena Vista for water and power, installing new uh, water lines, water mains, right. and sewer for that SB We did, we did run something about that. Yeah, we did run something about that. We just didn't say when it was going to happen, but we did say. Well, they're, they're happening, happening currently. Okay. Yeah. Happening yeah. Good. currently. Well, good. We need that stuff. We don't be like L.A. and have 125-year-old pipes that keep exploding all over the yeah, place. Yeah, we don't wait for that to happen, right? Yes. Especially when you have how many new units going in there, right? Well, besides the planning commission doing no, not plan, I guess they planned to be dark, so they they, they were dark. And uh, city council meeting on tomorrow. Um, they're going to approve 
a um let's see do i i don't know if i put it on the no i did not one of the things that's not on here which just came out today they did a special addendum to the the breaking news yes we have you know, i was gonna ask do, 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 why was they the have city a, council agenda amended because they have now put on the closed session uh mr nick gutierrez versus the city of burbank oh. and they're going to talk about the case which means something has come up and they have to notify the public, so I had to send out a special notice because it's only 24 hours notice that they amended the agenda. So something has come up with the mysterious Nick Gutierrez, or Nicholas Gutierrez, against the city of Burbank to make council district. Remember now, this is the one one person that nobody's ever heard of, nobody knows about, who's never come forward. Nobody, and nobody's Burbank, seen in person that no, we know of. And wants Burbank to change their entire election system so he feels, because he has felt disenfranchised. And please, tell me who this guy is. Tell me if he's ever even voted in an election before. Does anybody out there know him? Yeah, I think they Let used a know. name that was very gen- generic. But, you know, might, they should use the name Joe Smith, you know? I mean, I, I just, I, I'm sorry, you know? They, they said to the counsel me, it's so unusual to have a guy file this kind of a lawsuit and not want to be involved in the process of how to fix the situation. It, it, I'm telling you right now, it's a shakedown. Shakedown. So hopefully, whatever our city attorneys will come up with to tell the council on Tuesday, and we won't find out because everything goes on. I, I, I don't think <laughs> I don't think anything's ever been reported out during the council meeting. It goes on in closed session. And, yeah, it's just the stand line. Uh, nothing was reportable. But yeah, well, it, it, no, the, the, no, yeah. He uses the line, no. No decisions were made. No actions were taken by the council that was right. reportable. That's it. That's what he says. Might as well just push a button on the, on our board that has that come out every time. Don't and we I, have it? And we like we li- something flushing or something. Oh. We 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 li- we like city attorney. He's a good guy. Joker Madugo is a good guy. We like him, but it's just frustrating that they are they keep you know. And I'll tell you what: when they settle a lawsuit, they should tell us a lawsuit got settled. You would have liked. Joe McDougal on Thursday, he was serving the bacon. Who's Joe McDougal? Our city attorney. For well, the listeners, for the listeners, I've heard his name in a while. So he, I, I said before, our city attorney Joe McDougal's, and Probably. they had department heads serving food yeah. for the city employees. He was serving the bacon, and I got a good picture of him. I so many the bacon. I There's have. a joke there. I'm not. There's I'm, a joke. There's like I'm, three jokes there. I'm staying away from all of them. Do we have the? Do we do the explicit thing on YouTube? You know, the only thing I got. The, the only thing I got about the the bacon is. I heard that at dinner tonight. Because that, that's where the bacon. I don't know who it was. That's where the bacon comes from. Um. Okay. Um, so that's on the closed session. We won't know what happens. We don't know why it's on closed session. It's sad because it's only discussing our future in the city. Um, but it's, it's, it, what a mess. What, a, what, a, just a stupid mess. We'll find out. Anyhow, um, they're going to approve an agreement with Play Power. Um, for the, uh, the R- Ralph Roy Park Toddler Replacement Project. Uh, so, if you're if you like to use the Ralph Roy Toddler playground, they're going to have new equipment in there, and and they're, they're going to redo it. So that's well, cool. think, so Play Power is uh, also known as Miracle Recreation. So they do playgrounds, yeah, apparently yeah. recreational and parks. I don't think everybody remembers when we had the large storms, a huge, huge, huge tree, huge, huge, huge like a ute, totally collapsed on. The playground equipment and it's still sitting there unusable and tape all around it you know it's closed off that's yeah, like old oh. versus new it's like our generation we played in trees we climbed trees and now the trees and it, our tree us. took out their jungle gym <laughs> right so generation x for the win so if you're frequent to yeah. ralph foy park what was it called before northwest the a baseball guy would have known that and what was it before Northwest Park? Oh, geez. A driving range. Yes, it was. It was a, a, actually a, a, a three-par. Wow. Did it have a name? No, it's just called it's the three-par on Victory. They didn't give things names, but. No, no, it didn't need to because it was only, you know, it was the only one. 
Um, one of a kind. Now the next one is very. Well, next I can't one, wait to hear. You I, I think it's this. yeah. I think it's gonna be. Oh a, boy. I'm getting okay. comfortable in my chair for, for this one. For Dr. two or three years ago, the city council started talking about why don't we start charging for parking in Burbank, <laughs> having parking <laughs> meters, and they decided okay, for a trial place, let's try the MetroLink lot. Well, three years later, there's no parking meters at the metric lot. They've just kind of said, oh, well, we're not doing that now. Now they're coming back and saying, now let's put parking meters downtown Burbank on San Fernando. Which is legendary for not charging for parking. Right. In Burbank. Right. Right. If you recall, they reported out in their report. The reason they did not put parking, uh, it wasn't going to be meters. It's going to be a, su- a station. Yeah, but you got to pay for parking. Right. Okay. The I, reason they I, did I, that. I parking meters make it easier for people to, to visualize. But they're not, they have not done that because people are not using Metrolink to go downtown. Well, the pandemic is ending. And guess what? People are going to start going back downtown and again. And that's why they are. So why not still put them there? Well, I, uh, but anyhow, so they want to do downtown Burbank on San Fernando between Olive and Magnolia, and on all, and on Orange Grove and, size, and the side streets Palm. there and the parking structures. It does include well, the parking structures. Say, no, it did not say the parking structures. It, it, it had a map, and the parking structures were not in that map. I did hear the elevators will be coin operated, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Bring change. And, just kidding. Just kidding. And if you get stuck in the elevator, whatever, whatever money we, is. Hey, you ran out of day, dimes or something. Yeah, whatever I don't know. money saved that day, you get the jackpot, you know? And, right. Well, you know, the city has done studies, and I really have, I get it. When they, the reason you put in parking meters, a lot of people are going to, are, are saying, Burbank's never done that. But you got to maintain these parking lots and so forth. And okay, you know well, what? let's talk about that. I, I, I agree 100%. I mean, that's all. It, but here's the problem. Okay, so it's going to cost about $325,000 to procure and install the necessary infrastructure, as well as annually cost up to $500,000 a year to pay for a parking operator to manage the program and provide parking enforcement. Now, here's the rub. A rub. It's going to take two years to make any money. Staff in... No, staff anticipates annual revenue for the program will be approximately five hundred thousand per year. Right. So it'll take two years for us to, for the city to get in the red. No, because every year, it, it costs right. five hundred thousand a year to operate the program, and they're going to make back five hundred thousand dollars. So right, it, but they initially have to pay three hundred twenty-five thousand right for the infrastructure. So that rounded up to a million. It's going to take two years before the city's making anything. But they say it's going to take five hundred thousand every year to pay the right. parking people, and that's the money that gets coming in every year. It's going to break even every year. After the first two. No, every year. <laughs> if, you, if, if, every, if every year you pay $500,000 out and every year you're getting $500,000 back, there's no profit right, but there. The, right, but the first year we're paying $825,000. Yes. And we'll make $500,000 that year. Okay. So then, it'll cost us okay, money. Okay, then, then what do we pay the second so it'll year? It'll be the second year before we start making What do we pay money? the second year? Five hundred. And how much do we get back the second year? Yeah, but we're still paying the th- off the three twenty five part. This isn't the time to do math, but yeah, I, I don't think you understand. We're we're going to make exactly what we pay every year. Yeah, after we pay. Yeah, so off the we're, initial, we're actually outlay. we're actually going to lose three hundred twenty five thousand over over the on the project. I don't think so. I I, I anyway, well, I just let's copy. have another commercial. We'll okay. talk about the math. Well, I copy and paste it from the report. So I'm telling you right now. Because I remember when right, they but it doesn't, it doesn't mention that. It. I was just doing some superfluous addition. But the math. the goal here, because we're going to ask for it in Magnolia Park, the same thing. It gets people to move their cars. Your that, employees are lazy asses that park in front of where they work and walk 10 feet. Okay. And when you got a paid customer, has to walk six blocks. I, I, all I'm saying is there's no income to the city coming in off this thing. Oh, well, I believe it pays for itself. Yeah. No, you're right. It pays for itself, and that's it. But in the long run, right. So what's so what's the point, right? If it, you know, yeah, if the, no point, point. the point is, is that how how are we going to maintain parking structures? Right. How is it going to help if we're not no making money, money coming in? Yeah, I agree. That's my point. Yeah. So and if it includes the parking structures, and I, and I, you, I, I won't gotta, be going downtown. And anymore. I got to tell you the truth. Why 
I mean, five hundred thousand dollars to pay somebody to administer the program? Are you kidding me? And do the enfo- and do the enforcement? And do the infor- so, so we already have one contract okay, so company we're, doing. We're, we're going to talk. We're going to talk about Laz, right? Okay, so Laz is, is our parking people, and you said they want to hire more people, right? Our parking the parking people you, you said earlier, right? They're looking okay, for so, employees. So this is probably why we want to hire more people is to do this, but. I just can't imagine taking five hundred thousand dollars to run this program. You know, where are they going to pay the guy in charge? A half a million dollar, two hundred thousand dollars, and and a hundred thousand dollars for employee. If 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 there's no, if we just the city's just going to break even on this on an annual basis, what's the point? What's the benefit? There, of this? Thank you, thank you. And then we're going to have two different companies contracted to do parking enforcement in the city. Laz to do the general parking enforcement, and then uh, whatever contractor this is to do. I believe that yeah. contractor the meters? is going to do like the lot, yeah, uh, the metro lot, and the 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 certain area. Well, they're not doing the metro lot now. They're just doing do downtown Burbank. Yeah, I, th- I think we agree. We just we're not seeing a benefit to the city. That, that's exactly what with I, I, I'm I'm all because I I agree like what Ross says. People park their cars there all day long. And people who want to come into their stores now, you know, I, I'm not going there. There's nowhere to park. Now they I have to I, get like employee permits or something to, so they don't have to pay the meters or how does that work? It's a whole, sounds like a lot more work, a lot well, more you infrastructure, that and, you know, that doesn't benefit anybody. A lot of people don't realize there's lots all over the city that are city owned that you can pay. Yeah, they rent, they rent out the spaces. We talked about that at the courthouse a couple weeks you know, ago. Over on Magnolia, uh, next to the uh, pet store. CNC, I think it is. Yeah. That's a paid lot, which Porto's pays for spots for their employees. Well, I would say I, I have, I understand the philosophy behind this. I understand the benefits that, that could occur, but I don't see the benefits on paper unless whoever wrote this report out didn't write it in a way that's that's you know because all it means is okay if they put now they put parking meters on on a Magnolia, is it going to cost? You know, they're going to make two hundred thousand a year and have to pay two hundred thousand a year to make it work. I mean, it just doesn't it, it doesn't make sense to me overall. That I think the city of LA is probably making hand over foot money on their parking meter system. And Burbank, we could best we do is break even. Doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, well, moving on. That's something that I will give you David Krisky's phone number. Well, I'm going to call. No, I, I'm going to listen to the report. I'm going to listen to the key. You know, okay. Hopefully, our council members are going to want to say, you know, there are questions. Moving along. All right. Moving right along. Discussion on possible construction measures to reduce potential construction impacts to equestrian uses and equines. Oh. The, AKA, that's that, horses to you and me. With this construction that's going on on Mariposa, the Pickwick project. That's where the horse people are a little worried. Uh, Drop trucks moving in and out, trucks moving sand and dirt. The, common the, when there's construction. They're going to exactly. spook the horses or whatever it is. They're also talking about maybe closing down some of the trails and bridges during the construction too. I'm sure the people there will be very upset about that if they want to do that also. So that's something well, that's going to be. Little... They want to do. They want to. They want to limit limit the the footprint. The problem disruption. Yes. For a project they didn't want in the first place. And now on Wednesday, Craig is going to go and attend the senior board at Jocelyn. You are, Craig? No. No, he's on special Nobody told assignment. me. I'm, I'm back on, on assignment. You're on Jocelyn <laughs> duty. Yeah, well. Off to Jocelyn you go. Yeah, I, it's about nutrition. I Look at me. What do I know about nutrition? Absolutely nothing. Um, and then we go into Thursday. That meeting at Wednesday is at 1 p.m. at the Jocelyn Center. Thursday, the infrastructure board is scheduled to meet at 6 p.m. Uh, so far, as of uh, on the weekend here, their agenda has not been posted. But you got to figure it's, it's about infrastructure and probably something important. And you'll be bored. They, 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 yeah, they, but they actually will discuss something compared to the police commission. And that's at the community services yeah, no. building. Is it always the same place? Always the same place. Always at the same place. Okay. Same bat time, same bat channel. Right. I know that. I remember that. Yeah. Good 60s television. Um, big, big. 
Well, Friday? Big football game. Friday is the big football game, and it's, it's a very interesting. Big. And I thought we big. just, we'd spend a little time because it's sad that once again. No pool. We, <laughs> yeah, you can't make the eight ball to the corner pocket. No. <laughs> um, I think it's sad once again that our generations now don't get to do the things that we got to do when we were younger. Too dangerous. You had Burbank Burroughs week back then. And every day during the the week, there'd be an event, and the, the one it might be the um you're, you're the bed races, the the mattress races, bed but, races down San Fernando, down San Fernando, where they 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 throw the head coach on a bed, and the linemen from each team well, would. What could possibly go wrong? He was wearing a football helmet, and he was on a mattress. Yeah, those right. are fluffy. And it, yeah. but it's yeah, a, it's a fun it. event, and it's it's you know just, you know Burbank versus Burroughs and all that. Uh, we used to have the the eating contest. I think it was at Santoro's used to sponsor the eating contest one day. I know there was another day where players from both schools would go to the, the cheerleaders and stuff would go to the middle schools or back to the junior highs and have rallies and stuff. Um, the day of the game, the Burbank High Marching Band would march from Burbank High down to Memorial Stadium, down Glen Oaks, down Olive. No, Magnolia. Oh, Magnolia. I'm sorry, Magnolia. Did it for several years with my kid. Yep. He carried a tuba. And now, and once again, the they instrument. take a bus. <laughs> well, next to drums. Well, yeah. they probably don't take they a bus the now. the biggest instrument. Because I was just told by a coach friend of mine that now they've made it so every team in Burbank or every activity must pay 100% of their own buses. There is no money from the district for buses for anybody. You know what I say to that? The wheels on the bus go round and round. Or yeah. the wheels have come off. Yeah, because, you know, you, you got to pay for $300,000 for a new superintendent. So that's going to be. Okay, I got a question somewhere. then. Your Burbank bus, it's, it's empty. Why don't <laughs> yeah. they transport the band down? Because the there, tuba won't fit in it? There were two people on that bus tonight that went by us twice. The same two people. Yeah, we, we actually both times. three buses. Yeah, the same right? two, same two the people same were on it. <laughs> Was that including the driver or no? No. 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 Oh, okay. We saw, you saw in what, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, uh, three buses go by on Riverside Drive. Why? <laughs> I just, and, and, and what, 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 in between the, the, the buses went by? Metro buses. Use real them, buses. Use them yeah, for, real buses. Use them for something. So, for I mean, there's six or seven buses going by at between six and seven o'clock tonight. But nobody. <laughs> Any, anything that said Burbank on the side of it was empty. Well, get back to the big yeah, game. You know, I big game. Big game. You know, many years ago, back about fifty years ago, I can say that uh, I started a something at Burroughs that uh, well, you're a lot of trouble. Throwing red dye in the Burbank High. No, game? I would go out to Casa de Cadillac, and I would get four convertibles from them. And they would lend them to us. And we rode the Queens around the football field. We can't do that anymore now because we spent ten That's million dollars right. well, on a ten million dollars on a field that we can't put a car on. Then when they couldn't get cars, Cadillac with convertibles anymore, they started getting fire trucks and water and power trucks, and they put the kids up on there. And they can't do that anymore because you can't drive anything on that field. But I look back to my years. I, I have pictures. Me dressed in a nice little uh, tuxedo, a tuxedo, had to say that properly, and I got to drive around the queens and the queens, and I started that back in class seventy three and seventy four, and they did that for many years, and that was a big thing. Oh yeah, I remember when they put extra stands on both ends of the football they field. They could have a ten thousand capacity, and and now. Forget it. Well, now, now number one doesn't even sell out anymore. Number two That's a sad part. is that even if it were, they would they wouldn't put any more temporary stands up anymore. They, in fact, I was told uh, I saw an email today by the Burroughs principal that they're only going to allow five hundred of the students at Burroughs to use their ASB cards. They always say, "Well, you buy an ASB card, you get to go to the games for free." Well, not necessarily because well, this game's all a lot different. But I, with you saying that, but you know, Burroughs is playing for a league title on Friday night, right? And it doesn't change. Burroughs is a visitor side that is a much smaller stand, right? 
And that's why they're limiting the. No, they've of people. already said on the. I'll send them an email. They're going to be using it. There's a section on the main stands. Well, they also. always do. You haven't been no. to a football game no, in. I, I, I'm, I'm just years. telling you, but they've never put a, a limit on this on the amount of kids who can get a pass before. Well, it's ASB unfortunate. Cards. They don't even fill the large stands anymore. Yeah, at a Burbank Bros game, it's really sad. That's true. So, but my my whole point of this was, it's too bad they don't have the activities they used to have to really bring up spirit and to give a tradition. Tradition's gone. It's just the Burbank Bros game now, and that's that's basically it. it. It's too bad there were a lot of traditions over the years that our kids nowadays don't get to experience. You know, I'm, that's very true and very sad. Big um, weekend, big weekend coming up next weekend, and somebody's looking for volunteers. We got a lot of people who's looking for, a lot for volunteers. Of volunteers, and they all want to do, them to do the same thing at the same time. They want to dig. We'll start. We'll start off with the the library. They're having a, a dig event, and of course, we never did find out with if dig is an acronym for something or it's not. Not it. I we we looked into it. Yeah, it's, it's uh, dig so is, it's just the act of digging, and right. you're supposed to yell it because it's in all caps. But they use all, big. yeah, they use all caps. Big. So we figured it stood for something, but I guess not. So, so uh, that's uh, Saturday morning. They're asking for people to come volunteer at the, the central library from eight to ten a.m. That's the twenty eighth. Oh, Saturday the twenty eighth. Uh, they're not going to be doing any digging in the library. No, around it. There's a park, and I forget the name of that park outside of the main central library. That's one, of, that's one of the homeless people who live in that park. They, well, they don't live you. there anymore, but they have, there's a time capsule in there. There's a couple of them in there, and all around there, they're, they want people to so What's going to happen to those time capsules when they destroy that library and, and rebuild it across the street? Probably the same thing that happened to the other time capsules. They'll open it up. Yeah, but why did the they- display of the stuff out. Why did they open the last one up? They forgot all about it, and our good friend, the Gilly Departed, Stan Lynch, who was there when they planted it 50 years before that, said, what about the time capsule? They go, what time capsule? Oh, the one that's embedded inside the Magnolia Bridge uh, behind the plaque. Really? Yes. Take a look. Oh, there's a time capsule there. So May Stan rest in peace. He was the lucky one to... Take a chisel and a hammer and ha- get that thing out. And, yeah, absolutely. Out. A lot of historical stuff in there. Now, I hope I hope somebody in the city can actually remember about the uh, time capsules that are buried up there at the library. Well, the ones up there are above ground. Are uh, okay? Are they? Yes. I still probably don't know about them. Um, put a post it on the outside. Right. Remember. So yeah, they need volunteers to help tidy up around the park. Bring your trowel. Trow- um, you call it a trowel? And also gardening trowel. Like with this chiclet, it's hard to say trowel. It's trowel. If you're if you're, S- if you're small shovel. Sorry. Sorry, we'll behave. All right. You're, if you're at a don't want to go help out at the library, then they want you to go help out at the the McCambridge uh Veterans Memorial. And that's also from eight to ten AM. Too bad they didn't pick a different weekend. Gotta move quick. Or do something like that. So they're at, at their library from 8 to 10 at, at the uh, memorial, and they want people to help you know, get the memorial ready for Veterans Day, which is, of course, November 11th. You know that's a Saturday? That's going to piss off a lot of sa- a lot of uh, city people who have to now come on a, their, I doubt if their day off. I wonder if they're going to do it on Saturday or on Friday. You know what? Tell that to the people who di- died that where we're, we're celebrating. I don't think they took weekends off. Nope. Um, also on Saturday, there is a is drug take back day. So for all the drugs and needles you find in, while you're digging around in the parks, yeah, and that's you a, can bring them bring them here. That's at the uh, police department from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, so anything, any uh, your unwanted, unused, or expired prescription medication. You can bring them for safe disposal. Now noted, it's the beer parking lot. It's don't right. bring them into the lobby right. of the police or fire station. They have it's a, the back parking lot. They have. I've covered that event for several years. They have it work, worked out. They give you. There's literally cones. You don't need to get out of your car. You drive up. You pop your trunk. They will have a cadet take whatever. They don't care what it is. They will take and weigh it and take care of it. It does say here no illicit drugs or needles. Nope. They're right. asking so. 
Yeah, they don't. So they, basically, prescription medication. Yeah, they don't want illegal drugs. They want their, right. prescription, old right. prescription medication. You got an old, a couple old bottles here in your cabinet. Instead it's, of flushing them down the toilet or throwing them away, right. bring them here and they'll dispose of them. And that properly. includes vitamins. Yep. Anything that you know, how many I got? I missed the last two. And I, on my countertop, I got all sorts of. So we know where you're going to be. Yeah. The rear parking lot of the police station. Right. I've been there before. Well, and McCambridge Park is holding the uh, the Little Pumpkins Tut Party from what? 10, what 10 are they to 11.30 a.m. Did you say tot party uh, or tot dirty? Not a pot tart. Not a pot not party. A pop tart. Tot party. Tarty. Tot party. Yes. Party. From kids two to five. Yeah, this tooth, I'll tell you. I can't and, um, say nothing. The cost is $5. So if you want to go and participate, you get to pay the city $5. Now, was that per kid for or kids, for, for, kids? for kids two to five? For kids. Can you get rid of your kids too? That, that's a different giveaway on a different uh, day. What's happening over? Uh, they're going to be the Halloween Skate Fest at Valley Skate Park from 5 to 8.30. And what did now, Craig Durling th- ask tonight? This is actually interesting because they're going to charge you $5 for the, uh, the top party. But they're going to have a big raffles and food and everything else at the skate park for free. So I don't know why they'd have to charge a little kid five dollars. All, all about the donors yeah. and sponsors. I, guess. I will tell you, I covered that event more than once. They are very lucky with some of these skateboard companies. Oh yeah, uh, Mr. Graceffo has been in charge of it, and he Mr. Gets, Graceffo was left the city four years ago. And there are no he strangers. Still goes to, back to, to the sponsorships skate park every year. He does. Yes, he does, and he's out there. Well, he's to be a special guest on our podcast Wednesday, so we'll talk to him about that. Okay, yeah, no, he he puts on. He knows every kid. He gets out there and goes on boards with them. So no, no, he does not get on. You don't know what the way. Not like the planning. Mind. Not like he, the planning board. He does not get on a skateboard. That would never happen. Last time I saw him, he had on. orange hair. Yeah. He's um, lucky he has hair. He well, had orange hair. Well, the, the, the event a while. At, the event at the uh, skate park has had competitions, raffles, and food. Uh, open to all. No, hey, no prior. Re- they do some regist- good cooking out there. No prior registration. And for those of you who don't know, the skate park is on Clybourne and Edison, right by Edison, not not at the corner because you have uh, uh, the park right there. Wait a minute, the baseball field. Why is it then called Clybourne Park? Because it's called the Valley Skate Park. Why? Because it's on Valley. Or it's in the Valley. It's in the Valley. Well, on the Valley. In the Valley. On the Big Valley? The Valley is uh, the Eastern Street. But that's, that park's not on Valley. It's like you're the, break, about skate, to break out into song. The skate park is not on Valley, It's a show tune, Ross. The skate park's on Clybourne. Wait, but the cross street is Valley. No, the parallel street's Valley. The cross street's Clybourne. I mean, uh, Edison. So the dumpster... <laughs> Dumpsters on Valley, the front doors on Clybourne. Anyhow, Is that how that works. It, it's right next to the uh, the baseball field there. And I was sometimes told, people can go, know too much about the city. I was so once told, "Don't drive down Valley." When I had a old Cutlass, and I had so much crap in the trunk, looked like a lowrider car, and a police officer Low said, run. "This street is not the street you want to be driving down in that car." Oh, that was also Elmwood. Ah. Dave uh, Ferran. Oh, uh, yes. Good old Elmwood boy. Remember Elmwood very well. What okay. else is happening? Da, well, da, da, da. The Burbank Community Band is going to put on a show at 7 p.m. at the First Christian Church at 221 South 6th Street called Harmony of Halloween. So that's another event Ooh. Saturday. I was told they're playing some songs from Phantom of the Opera and some other spooky songs. And then Ross has a note here saying other events all over Burbank. Ross, what do you got for the other events? All over. There are more. I don't know why, but this year it feels like there are probably 100 houses that are decorated. People that have not been working at the studios have had plenty of time. Very busy at home. Getting their yards ready. And I'll tell you. Well, these aren't events. This is just the drive around, look at houses. Well, the city put out their list. Get a lot of set decorators and. and, who are yeah. looking for stuff to keep them busy and exactly they and do it up. If you have young ones, cruise around. It'll take you a couple hours to get around. You can divide the city up, up you know the hill or the valley. You got tons of places. And I recommend in these neighborhoods get out and walk. Yeah, the neighborhood on the sidewalks. Please don't. 
go creeping down the street with your headlights off and all that, looking at the lights because then you're not looking for the pedestrians and the kids running across the dark street. So even during the see day, it every every year, Mr. Sh Mr. Craig Durling, didn't you find a house during the daylight that looked just as good? <laughs> yeah, night? yeah, there was there. Were, yeah, there's one in the uh, neighborhood here that's very well known for its holiday decorations, and it's quite impressive during the day, and you got the whole thing to yourself. You go there at night, you're tripping over the broken sidewalk. Uh, dogs. I didn't know there were that many that many dogs in uh, the Tuluka Lake Burbank area, but they're all out there at night. That's 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 the Dodger at the door trying to. Get I was going to say, again. did you record Dodger? No, that's that sounds just like Dodger. God, it did. That's Dodger dog the dog. One. No, but please be careful driving around looking at the lights. Uh, Halloween, uh, you see it a lot at, at Christmas. People. Blacked out, driving around at night, looking, and they're all looking like this. They're all looking like yeah, that. Yeah, it's not hard for people for the... who are looking at their cell phones across the street to know you're coming if you don't have your headlights right. on. Right, pedestrians not paying attention <laughs> and drivers not paying attention. It's a, a very dangerous um, combination. Yeah, you know, because when one car hits one pedestrian and it's... Lights out. Literally. Okay. What are we up to? Well, that leaves us to the one, and, and guess what? Oh. Nobody in the studio knows what it's about. He, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't write it down, so we have no idea. But it's that time of the show that, yes, if you stayed here for the first uh, this is your reward. hour and 15 minutes of this show, you now get to hear it. And, of course, we're talking about Ross's rant. Ross's rant. Ross's okay. rant. I got a question. <laughs> okay. These memorials that I talked about that are getting set up when people have gotten killed accidentally. You know, there's one of Victory and Magnolia still. There's one now, Buena Vista and Verdugo. Uh, there's another one. Oh, the, the one where the kids got killed uh, up on Glen Oaks. Who maintains or who clears out those candles? You know, uh, the flowers are, you know, God forbid we have an officer or fireman get killed. Those memorials get so big. Does the city have a date? How long those flowers will stick around, or or well, who clears well, them? And, and not to, not to, I mean, you're absolutely right. Now I know at the the, the Vietnam War Memorial in Washington D.C., they've actually have people who I guess at the end of the day or the week, I'm not sure the time period, but walk around and and respectfully take everything that's been left at the memorial, catalog it, and actually store it somewhere. They don't throw it well, away. There's an actual museum. Of things that have been right. left behind so, at the memorial. So I, I mean that that's now I don't know what the policy is in Burp because you're right. There are a couple of memorials that have been, you know, do we do we need to maybe, you know, I know when an officer dies sometimes, you know, on a freeway or that they put a a sign up on the freeway or something in an, an area saying a memorial passage or something. Well, the three kids that lost their tragic life, they've dedicated and painted that with their likings or facials, and there are always new candles and flowers there. But these other ones, I go by Victory and Magnolia every day. And that girl, young girl, died, what, a month ago now. And somebody keeps bringing fresh, fresh flowers. I understand, but how long do we allow that to go on? And who maintains that? And who cleans yeah, it? Yeah, you, you, who's going to want to answer that question? Yeah, you, I was like, you want to be the person no, that tells no. them no more? I mean, that's... But it's stuff that I have people ask me what happened there. And I understand that's the reason right. some of these memorials, but maybe the city... Maybe they have a policy. If they don't have a policy on colors of lights at City Hall, I can guarantee they don't. Because years ago, they never did this. How many times have we... This is something new. Craig, you... Yeah, I, I you know, last 10, well, last not 10 to years, equate it, Not to equate... These are totally different scenarios, but the th thing that leapt to mind for the purpose of discussion was yard sale signs. Right. Everybody staples them up all over the neighborhood. They never take them down. Have you ever gone up them down? to a telephone pole? A wooden pole and look. How many staples? Yeah. Staples. I used to work nails. for a city where at, at night one of our assignments was to go around and take them all down because oh. there was an ordinance against having them up. There. Isn't that Bob Kramer's job? He used to, well, he, he used, used to be to that, but you know, and it's I just noticed that, and I I feel horrible for these people that have gotten killed. You know, these are accidents, and I I understand the point of having a living memorial for a week or until they're buried. But do we have a policy, or how long are we going to let it go? And the things that are there, maybe the city should collect them and tell the, the family, what would you like to do with them? Yes. Give it to them. 
it's a very sensitive subject and there's not an easy answer, but something has to be. It's a rant that I just, uh, you know, I, I noticed it every week and I see stuffed animals and new things coming up at these different ones. How long do we let it go? And, you know. It's not so much a rant as it is just a oh, an observation. A poser. Yeah. Tough question. Yeah, it's, it's a question that should be asked, though, because it, it after a while, it, and like I said, people after a while drive by there, and they don't know what happened here. You, you know, know, another one is Veterans Day or Memorial Day, when they put the flowers at the memorial at McCambridge. How long do they leave those roses sit there until they're dead and falling apart? I know the same thing happens in cemeteries. You know, they, they go to, you know, there's actually, you know, the crews at cemeteries will go around and collect, you know, dead flowers, but they also collect items and they yeah, save so them. So it was just, makes you think, you know, we're only here so long. And I know these memorials are very touching to some people and they're touching to me too, but how long do we leave them there? That's a good question. Not a way to, survey. A we need a survey. We need to post a survey. Can we do that? Can we, we can do that. Survey? We, Get people's we, we, thoughts we can, on that. We can put a, a survey on Twitter and uh, see what people have to say about it. So that was the week that was, and the week will be for October 23rd. And I'll tell you, when we uh, sat down to shoot the, or go over the show notes, half the stuff wasn't on the show notes. It never is. Because of one of our a whole week to put stuff in one, here. One of our people forgets to write anything down. and uh, You're lucky I remembered my tooth tonight. Yeah. I'll give you a hint. It's one of one of the three of us, and it's not me. And 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 I'm the guy who writes the original one up. So that leaves one. I'll tell you what. I, I you know he never forgets to do is is, is get to the uh, pregame uh, restaurant on time. <laughs> I did pretty good tonight, didn't I? Yeah, you're actually. You do. I was two, two minutes, minutes late. No, we're not, nobody's keeping score. Well, I, how was I last week? Last week he was early. I, I wasn't was here early. at all last week, so I don't even get the, the, I get any points. Thing for a free meal, huh? Not even for a free meal. Well, on your special assignment, yeah. be careful, return safe, please, because Hope we to. have stuff to do in a week or two. Where, where are you uh, flying to? It's a special, it's top secret, it's top secret. Okay. Do. Let's do it, post a survey, see who, where they everybody thinks I'm going. <laughs> I don't think anybody cares. It's work-related, it's not even for fun. So. I was going to say any of that. Actually, Nowhere was, tropical. Just wondering what city you you're, you're happen to be. It sounds like New Orleans. Right. You know, it's funny that you. <laughs> Rhymes with New Orleans. You posted a picture. New Orleans. <laughs> you posted a picture the other day of your new booties. Of my booty? No. No. That would be against policy. Of your booties. My new boots. That's for the big trip next month. See? Going to go hang out with uh, my brethren, the uh, polar bears in the Arctic for a little while. We're going to so miss you on Bring that back one. some pictures, hopefully. We will. We, maybe we could do a podcast of that alone. Good. Do a whole debrief of my Arctic adventure. That would be kind of cool. Um, now, now pictures? the pressure's on. Now I gotta. Now the pressure's on to find a, a, polar, find a polar bear. A polar bear effect. Well, yeah. I mean, you do have a, a, a zoo up there somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah, but I know you won't be shooting those with your iPhone. No, I better not be. <laughs> okay, everybody. Well, that's it for another week. That was the week will be our October 23rd edition. Have a great week, folks. We will be that's back it. to you next week. Until go next time. Burrows, go Burrows. Go. Oh. My Burbank Talks would like to thank all of My Burbank's advertisers for their continued support. Burbank Water and Power, Kusamano Real Estate Group, UME Credit Union, the Burbank Chamber of Commerce, Gain Credit Union, Providence St. Joseph Medical Center, Community Chevrolet, Media City Credit Union, UCLA Health, Tequila's Cantina and Grill, UPS Store on 3rd Street, and Hill Street Cafe.